So welcome back guys. So today in this discussion, we are going to talk about the basic anatomy of the uh, frontoethmoidal cells and also I'll be talking about the Kuhn's classification of the same. Now many residents and many young ENT surgeons find this topic really, really complicated and difficult to understand. But uh, in today's video, I hope to make this really easy for you, all of the ENT surgeons out there. So what I'm going to do, as you can see on the screen, uh, I'm going to show you uh, CT scans of different patients uh, and so that we can have a good variety of study for the frontal sinus anatomy and the various frontoethmoidal group of cells. So also apart from this, what I have is here, I'm going to show you a lot of different photographs uh, of the various different CT scans and diagrammatic representations of the anatomy of the frontal sinus, the frontal recess, and how the uh, location of the different, uh, what do you say, the the Kuhn cells, that's the T cells, the frontal ethmoidal cells, uh, exactly is. So I'm going to show you all those basics. So I hope that after watching this video, you really are able to locate the uh, frontal ethmoidal Kuhn cells and the posterior group as well uh, in your next surgery and on the CT scans. So you can discuss this along with your radiologist friends and uh, you, can, you can make this topic really strong for your future. So this belongs to a standard textbook, which I used for my graduation. And um, okay, so before I start with the topic, uh, I would like to say that there are two types of uh, frontoethmoidal groups of uh, cells. So the one is the anterior, which uh, belongs, or you can say the anterior group of cells, which consists of the, the agar nasi, the most common, the agar nasi cell. And above the agar nasi, there are different types of four different types of cells, which we call it as the Kuhn's. Uh, cells. So the Kuhn classification is the anterior group of frontoethmoidal cells and the other group is called as the posterior group. The posterior group is basically uh, the bullar cell, the suprabullar cell and the uh, frontobullar cell. Okay, so these three belong to the posterior group as well. So uh, that's the anterior and the posterior. So basically one in particular, I'm going to show you the uh, sagittal scan over here. And at the same time, I'm going to pinpoint the exact location on the two different sections as well as the coronal and the axial. So that the 3D orientation of the, uh, the Kuhn cells is pretty much clear for all of you guys out there. So this is, this is all I'm going to do in this video and in the next video I'll be talking about the frontal sinus anatomy, the frontal recess anatomy and how exactly the frontal sinus drains. So the variations in the drainage all I'll be talking about in the next lecture. So uh, I think we should begin with the anatomy. So the first step, the first basic step in understanding the, the Kuhn's classification is to find the agar nasi. Now if you have given a uh, if you've been given a coronal section and you are supposed to find the Kuhn cells, whether they are present or not, you first have to go for the agar nasi. Okay, so you, the, the trick is to go from the most anterior aspect to the posterior aspect and to have a 1 mm scan max to max. The best one is so far is 0.5 mm or 0.6 mm, but if not, then you can work with 1 mm as well. So you go, you keep on going posteriorly, you start seeing the frontal sinus over here, which is in this patient full of uh, opacification. Uh, you can see the floor of the frontal sinus. Now the important point is to follow the floor of the frontal sinus and the frontal process of the maxilla. Okay, this thing over here, you can see over here, that's the frontal process of the maxilla and this is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid over here and that's the frontal beak area. So you keep on going posteriorly until a point where you can not see the floor of the frontal sinus anymore. As you can see, there is deficiency in the floor over here and this is the area where the frontal sinus ends and the frontal recess begins. Because if you can see the same thing on the uh, sagittal scan over here, uh, the frontal sinus is basically oriented in such a direction that the frontal sinus is oriented anteriorly and the drainage takes place posteriorly over here. So we have to go from anterior to the posterior. So, so far in the anterior section, we see the frontal floor over here, but as we soon enter the area of the frontal recess, this floor, if I can just move this away from here. So I can see this is a frontal floor, 
and as soon as we enter into the area of the frontal recess over here the floor disappears that's the same thing which we saw over here on the coronal section this is the floor throughout and once we reach posteriorly the the recess area starts and the floor disappears so that's the indication that uh, there is the beginning of the frontal recess now this is a frontal process of the maxilla the first pneumatized cell which you come across in the frontal process of the maxilla now this patient has a lot of opacification so it's going to be real difficult so i will show you a much more easier one okay so this is one more patient and uh, this is a coronal section much darker version i guess so you gotta follow you gotta keep following the um, you can see the frontal process of the maxilla and if you keep on going posteriorly the first pneumatized structure like this which you see over here as you can see on the screen right there that's the agar nasi cell okay so this is the agar nasi cell this is the inferior turbinate that's the middle turbinate that's the skull base over here that's the frontal recess area actually that's the maxillary sinus and that's the lamina that's the medial wall of the orbit okay and that's the lateral nasal wall so this is the agar nasi cell for all of you guys out there so the first thing is to locate the agar nasi and that is very very simple the first pneumatized cell in this area is the agar nasi cell and the rest you know that we have to understand the concept of type 1. So the Kuhn's classification suggests that there are four different types of cells. That's the 1, 2, 3 and 4. That's T1, T2, T3 and T4 type of cell. So according to the standard textbook over here, uh, this is a very same image which we saw last time. So if this is a coronal section, of the patient and the first thing which we see over here is the agar nasi cell in the area of the frontal process of the maxilla anteriorly and posteriorly we have the lacrimal bone so the agar nasi is basically a pneumatized lacrimal bone okay so and if we go further ahead this is a sagittal scan we can see the first pneumatized structure is the uh, the agar nasi cell and uh, we have this building block concept to understand the orientation of the cells now consider this block to be as the agar nasi cell that's the standard agar nasi cell which you can compare over in this scan over here the first pneumatized structure is the agar nasi so if we go and move on further ahead this is still the agar nasi cell over there and this is the same agar nasi okay so this is the same agar nasi now this concept um, that we knew that this was the agar nasi below and there's one more pneumatized cell above the agar nasi if we see that same thing on the cd scan over here this was the agar nasi but there's one more cell above the agar nasi directly below the frontal sinus and in the frontal recess area below the frontal beak we call that as t1 that's the first group of uh, the Kuhn's classification, the first cell, the T1. So a simple definition of T1 is that a single pneumatized cell above the agar nasi is T1. Okay, that's very simple. The same thing which we could see over here on the sagittal scan. Now this one was the agar nasi cell, right? There's one more cell above the agar nasi and that will be called as the T1. As you can see, it is exactly below the frontal sinus. It is nowhere inside the frontal sinus and it is playing, uh, it is placed in the frontal recess area below the frontal beak. Now this is the area of the frontal beak. The posterior projection of the frontal floor is the frontal beak over here and it's exactly below that. So all these points are really important. So I hope you uh, understood about the T1 concept. And now moving further ahead, the T2 cell is nothing but the Kuhn's classification second cell in which there are a group of cells. We can say two or more cells, maybe three, four, five, uh, above the agar nasi. So as you can see in this coronal section over here, our first aim was to locate the agar nasi, right? So this is the agar nasi over here, and that's the first T1 cell above the agar nasi, but there's one more cell above that, and that is really in the region of the frontal recess, and you cannot see the frontal sinus anywhere here. So these two cells are present in the frontal recess area, below the frontal sinus, below the frontal beak, and hence it is called as 
the second class the second group of the Coons classification because there are two or more than two so these are two cells so the definition states that it should be either two or more than two so more than or equal to two cells and below the frontal beak in the frontal recess as to be the second group of classification so if you see um, the orientation you can see this is a first cell over here that's the second cell exactly above the agonizer above here so i hope the second classification the second group of cell is also very much clear for you guys now i'm going to show all these cells in different ct scans so that you have a proper orientation so moving on further up ahead now this is a diagrammatic representation of the anatomy to make it even further more clear for you guys now this is a right side of the patient this is the right side okay now this is the midline septum over here that's the middle turbinate that's the inferior turbinate that's the skull base over here the cribriform plate and that's the area of the frontal recess this is the area of the orbit that's the lamina papyracea, the medial wall of the orbit. That's the area of the maxillary sinus posteriorly. And somewhere over here, the, the maxillary sinus will open. And this over here is the uncinate process, okay? This is really important. The uncinate process, this is the uncinate process. And somewhat, this has to be the agar nasi cell over here. Okay, this is supposed to be the agar nasi cell over here. And there's one cell above. So if you consider this as agar nasi then this becomes as t1 if you consider this somewhere over here to be the agar nasi then there are two cells above and that becomes t2 the second type of cell so the second diagram we are shown here as if we consider this as the agar nasi we have two cells so this becomes the second type of cell so two or more cells uh, above the agar nasi is t2 so i hope the concept of the T1 and T2 Kuhn cells so far is like really clear for you guys. Now, before I move on to the concept of T3 and T4, it is really, really important that you understand the concept of the frontal beak over here. Because as you can see on the screen, these are three uh, different types of cells. Now, this is this is the agar nasi cell. Number one represents the agar nasi cell. The uh, number two represents the uh, the number of cell above the agar nasi and the type 3 represents yet another cell over here so to show you on the figure on the sagittal scan this is the agar nasi cell over here there's one more cell above there's a huge gap in the anterior aspect of the agar nasi and you can see one more pneumatized cell over here which is actually above the level of the frontal beak over here um, so to understand this concept of T3 and T4, you really need to understand the concept of the frontal beak, which I'll be showing you. So if you are reading a live dynamic CD scan somewhere, so you always have to remember that if I take a sagittal section, it would be much easier for everyone over here. So, okay. So this is a sagittal section. We are coming from the most lateral aspect inside and we are seeing the frontal sinus to be appearing here. That's the frontal sinus. That's the area of the frontal recess over here. Now you can clearly see that somewhere over here, this is the agar nasi cell. You can clearly see that's the agar nasi cell because that's the first pneumatized cell in that region. You cannot see any more cell below that. And in case of 95% of population, agar nasi cell is always present. So this has to be nothing else than the agar nasi, okay? But I cannot see anything above the agar nasi over here. What I can see over here is the bulla, the suprabullar cell, the posterior group of the ethmoids, and then the spinoid sinus posteriorly over here. This is a spinoid sinus over here, as you can see. This is a frontal sinus, the floor intact, the beak intact. If I keep on going posteriorly, the frontal recess starts. This is a spinoid sinus over here. That is the attachment of the ground lamella, as you can see. So this is the frontal recess, the middle turbinate, the, uh, the posterior group of the ethmoids over here, and this is a spinoid sinus over here. So this was the agar nasi cell over here, as I said some time back. So that is why the anatomy of the radiology is like really important. The, uh, the drainage of the frontal sinus depends upon the anatomy uh, the patient is having so which I'll be covering up in the next lecture so the frontal beak 
uh, if I want to show you the level of the frontal beak, this is a nasal bone over here. That's the union of the nasal and the frontal bone over here. Uh, and this, this area was the frontal sinus. Now this is the frontal recess. Now this is the area of the frontal beak. If I can show you in a rich clearer way. Yep, this is the area of the frontal beak exactly. Now any cell above the agar nasi but below the frontal beak will be type 1 and type 2 cell okay and anything above the agar nasi which will be present in the frontal sinus and not in the recess and going above the frontal beak into the sinus will be either t3 or t4 type of cell now to further classify and differentiate between t3 and t4 we need to understand the one more concept uh, which Kuhn stated that in case of t3 uh, as you can see over here in case of t3 the origin is still in the ethmoid region it's actually an ethmoid cell which is extending into the frontal region but it extends at a level above the frontal beak as you can see over here this is the t3 cell as you can see over here this is a t3 cell over here it is still having an origin above the agar nasi but the extension is so much that it crosses the level of the frontal beak over here and enters the frontal sinus above the beak and that is the definition of the t3 but still it is not crossing more than 50 percent length of the frontal sinus and a superior to the inferior direction so that is also one more criteria for the t3 and t4 so this is the basic concept of t3 actually uh, extending beyond the frontal beak but less than 50 percent of the height of the frontal sinus now that is a t3 cell for you in the sagittal scan the same thing which you can see over here this is still now how you can actually measure the length of the frontal sinus is that this is the superior and that's the inferior direction so the entire length is measured on the steady scan and if the cell is below 50 percent that's t3 as you can see over here and if it is beyond 50 percent of the length and as you can see over here that's the t4 cell above the frontal beak area so that is how you classify the T3 and T4. To make it more even easy to understand, uh, I'll show you a sagittal scan of the T4. Now, this entire region is the region of the frontal sinus as per, and this is the region of the frontal recess over here. That's the area of the anterior ethmoids. That's the ground lamella here. That's the area of the posterior ethmoids. And you can see the area of the huge sphenoid sinus and the skull base sloping posteriorly. Um, and that's the area of the pituitary over here. So this is how you should orient yourself basically and um, this cell which you can see over here is a separate cell It's a complete isolated cell and you can see entirely within the frontal sinus and at the level above the frontal beak and Crossing more than 50% of the length of the frontal sinus from above to inferior direction So this is the frontal beak over here. You can see the T4 cell having an origin in the ethmoid region but extending beyond the frontal beak and extending beyond 50 percent of the height of the frontal sinus so this is how the uh, frontal sinus the t4 cell is classified and you can have a proper orientation so in this photograph as you can see in the on the screen over here this is a very clear picture that will clear the uh, basic uh, confusion in the uh, the T3 and the T4. Now, as you can see over here in this photograph, this is the entire length of the frontal sinus from the above to below direction. And on the right side, you can see this T4 cell having an origin almost at the base of the frontal sinus and which is crossing above 50% of the height. And on the left side, it is still above the frontal beak. As you can see over here in this region, this is the area of the frontal beak. And if you can compare the same image on this CT scan over here, this is the level of the frontal beak on both sides. And um, that's the floor of the frontal sinus still intact. And um, this cell is crossing beyond 50% length. And this cell is still below 50% length. So this is a basic point used for distinguishing between the T3 and the T4 cell over here. And um, this concept is really important.
So for that to understand, you need to understand the concept of the, the frontal beak over here. So this is the concept of T3 and T4 on the coronal section. The same thing you can see on the axial section. On the axial section, now remember, these cells are still the anterior group of cells, okay? So they are attached anteriorly. Uh, and a very similarly looking cell to this T3 and T4 is the uh, suprabullar and the frontobullar cell, which I'll show you in some time. So as you can see on the screen, this is the axial section where you can see the T3 and the T4 as well. And this is the sagittal section. Now, okay. Now, this was all about the uh, coon cells, the anterior group of the frontoethmoidal cells. Now, coming over to the posterior group of the frontoethmoidal cells. Now, why posterior? Because this was the agarnesi cell over here. That's the T1 cell over here. That's the frontal sinus and the frontal recess. Now, these cells are all anterior cells. Now, the bullar cell, this is a bulla, this is a suprabullar, and if a cell if this cell extends well beyond and within the frontal sinus, it will be called as the frontobullar cell. So these three cells are called as the posterior group of frontoethmoidal cells uh, as they have the attachment to the skull base over here, as you can see. So any cell on the sagittal section having an attachment or having the roof as the uh, skull base is called as the posterior ethmoid or you can see the posterior group of frontoethmoidal cells. Now, if you can compare this image with a block orientation, this is the agarnesi cell anteriorly. This is a T1 anteriorly. And exactly posteriorly, you're going to have the bulla. And above that, we're going to have the suprabullar cell. So this is the agarnesi. This is the bulla behind. And this is the T1, which you can see over here. So the same orientation. This is the agarnesi over here. That's the T1 over here. And exactly posteriorly, you can have the bullar cell and the huge suprabullar cell over here, which is like this one. So this over here corresponds to this, and that's the suprabullar cell having the roof as the skull base over here. So if I can show you one more image, that same image. See, on the coronal section, if you are a beginner or a resident who is not well aware of the 3D orientation, or you just have a coronal section of the patient, now this cell for anyone will say that this is a type 3 cell because it is having an origin below, it is going above, above into the frontal sinus almost. And, uh, but you cannot see the frontal beak very clearly over here in this region. So sometimes many may confuse this to be as a type 3 cell very easily. But in actual fact, this cell is not type 3, but this is actually a suprabullar cell and this is a supra orbital cell, okay? Now, this you have to be very sure. Whatever you see here is not the frontal sinus. This is actually a orbit and this is a supra orbital cell. You can never ever see the maxilla and the frontal sinus together. So you can see the maxilla very clearly over here and huge maxilla. At the same time, you cannot see the frontal sinus. It's impossible unless it's very much pneumatized, okay? This is the orbit and that's the supraorbital cell for you guys. So this is a supraorbital cell. It means that you are already very posteriorly placed at this level. And this cell you can see over here has to be not the frontal sinus cell or the frontal recess cell, but the 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 suprabullar cell okay now this has to be a suprabullar cell now this is the basic concept of how you can actually identify a suprabullar cell on a coronal section from a frontal sinus cell that's very easy once you know the anatomy of it okay so i will repeat once again whenever you see the maxilla you cannot see the whole frontal sinus if you see the maxilla, a huge maxillary sinus over here, and you see something like frontal sinus, it has to be the supraorbital cell over here. It has to be a supraorbital cell, as you can see over here. And in this uh, supraorbital region, whatever cell you can see, a huge cell has to be a suprabullar cell, okay? This has to be a suprabullar cell. So this topic is like really important for to understand. Now, once you understand the concept of the suprabullar cell on a coronal section, we can see the same thing on the sagittal section. Now, that was suprabullar cell. Now, the same cell 
uh, having an extension well within the frontal sinus area and that too above the frontal beak now this was the frontal beak level that's the nasal bone so you have to really differentiate which is frontal bone and what is nasal bone do not confuse this to be as the frontal beak because this is the nasal bone and this is the frontal bone and this is the level of the frontal beak over here so the posterior ethmoidal cell uh, the suprabullar cell extending well within the frontal sinus and having skull base as the roof as you can see over here the skull base is acting as a roof over here and it is very much placed posteriorly in the frontal sinus as compared to the anterior cell which was placed anteriorly so this is a huge give out that this is a posterior frontoethmoidal cell and a huge cell like this has to be always and always the frontal bullar cell this is a huge uh, misconception or i can say a misunderstanding a young resident will always have so unless he studies about it uh, he will not understand the concept so i hope after watching this video all these concepts are like really really clear in your mind and as you can see over here this is the area of the middle turbinate over here the ground lamella the posterior ethmoids the sphenoid sinus over here and all so that you have to have a better understanding for that so after that the concepts of i hope the concepts are clear in the basic anatomy and the orientation of all these different cells in the anterior and the posterior group of the frontoethmoidal cells and on sagittal the axial and the coronal scans uh, we have few live examples of the uh, ct scans which you can study now now if i can compare the same of uh, city scan the sagittal and the coronal section from the most anterior to the posterior uh, aspect now uh, if i if i keep my cursor over here at the area of the frontal beak so that you have a better understanding of how this thing works over here okay so uh, if i if i go from the anterior to the posterior aspect as you can see over here so if i keep on going posteriorly on the coronal scan you can exactly locate that in the sagittal scan as well so my cursor is actually on the area of the frontal beak over here so the more i come anteriorly the frontal beak seems to be intact in this region which you can correlate on this scan as well that this area is the area of the frontal beak now if i go posteriorly this frontal beak will disappear eventually and the frontal recess will start so this is the area that the frontal recess starts and as you can see over here the frontal recess has started and this here is the exact area of the frontal beak as you can see over here that's the area of the frontal beak and that's the area of the nasal bone over here and if you can keep on going posteriorly you will start encountering the agar nasi cell over here and then respectively the anterior group of the ethmoids which you can see over here and then eventually you will come across the ground lamella over here now this is the anterior ethmoidal artery so the anterior ethmoidal artery is exactly anterior to the ground lamella or uh, exactly behind the artery will be the ground lamella will be the ground lamella so uh, this area begins the uh, marks the beginning of the posterior group of the ethmoid cells and as you can keep on going posteriorly over here eventually you will reach the uh, sphenoid sinus now this patient has a huge uh, posterior group of ethmoidal cells and eventually you can reach the anterior wall of the uh, sphenoid sinus over here and there you can have we have reached the right sphenoid over here this is the patient's right sagittal scan and eventually we can see the uh, the area of the pituitary fossa over here the optic cup depression and the internal carotid artery the same thing we can do on the axial scan and uh, very well now the advantage of the axial scan is that we can see all the sinuses in one picture over here so if i keep on coming uh, anteriorly on the coronal section over here the same thing we can locate on the axial scan now uh, this was the frontal sinus that's the level of the frontal sinus over here and if i move on to the uh, axial section we can see the anterior group of the ethmoidal cells the posterior group of ethmoidal cells with the interdivision septa in between the ground lamella as well and eventually we can see the uh, sphenoid sinus as well so we can actually study the coon cells on all the sections over here
and that is really beneficial to have the proper anatomy of the radiology as well. So we as surgeons should also have proper anatomy of the radiology so that we can have a better surgery outcome. So I hope you like this video. Uh, if you have any doubts, uh, you can leave them in the comment section below. I'll be very happy to reply to all of your doubts. And my next lecture will be about the frontal sinus anatomy, live surgical photos, as well as I'll be showing you how the frontal sinus drains uh, the drainage pathway and the variations in its anatomy. So till then, take care, guys, and be safe and take care.